On today's show, Jaguar unveils the production I-Pace ahead of next week's Geneva Motor Show, Hyundai does the same thing with its long-range Kona EV, and we give you a little update on what's been going on in Tesla Model 3 world. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host, and it's my job to sift through the news of cleaner transportation and renewable energy to bring you the very latest roundup of the week's news in bite-sized format, just in time for the weekend. As always, thanks for joining me. As I'm sure you already know, it's the Geneva Motor Show next week, and as a consequence, we've had a few companies carry out online reveals ahead of their car's official Geneva debuts. The first of these is Jaguar, which unveiled the production version of its 2019 iPace SUV yesterday during a special online broadcast. And while the production iPace doesn't look all that different to the concept car we saw last year, we've now got some cemented specifications to share. With twin motor or wheel drivetrain developing a total of 300 kilowatts, the iPace sprints from 0 to 62 miles per hour at 0 to 100 kph in 4.8 seconds and its 90 kilowatt hour battery pack gives a 480 kilometer, 300 mile range on the new WLTP test cycle. It also has 100 kilowatt CCS DC quick charging as standard, and like the Tesla Model X, has a front and rear trunk, although Jaguar are calling the front trunk a fruit, front boot. Pricing will start from 63,500 pounds sterling in the UK, which is about 87,300 US dollars, give or take, before incentives. The order books are now open, so it looks like Tesla may now finally have some competition in the luxury SUV marketplace. As regular viewers will know, Porsche has been working hard to prepare itself a place in the electric marketplace with the impending launch of its Mission E, a car which it hopes will cross shop against the Tesla Model S in the luxury car marketplace. We already know that the Mission E hopes to recharge faster than current Teslas thanks to the next generation 800 volt CCS charging system it will ship with, but this week a Porsche executive took a dig at Tesla by saying the Mission E would be able to sustain high speed travel for longer than a Tesla Model S, referencing the notoriety that Tesla Model S cars have for overheating if pushed too hard on the Autobahn. Since I've not experienced the overheating of a Model S, but I have driven at top speed on the Autobahn in one. It's tough to say if Porsche is right or not. I can tell you, though, that driving at more than twice the usual speed limit that other countries have takes a whole lot of concentration, so I really don't know how many people will bother about it anyway. We're back to Geneva with this next story, specifically to Hyundai, which unveiled its all-electric version of the Kona SUV this week. Predictably called the Kona EV, this new vehicle will be Hyundai's first long-range electric car, and it will come with a choice of two different battery pack options, a 39.2 kilowatt hour one and a 64 kilowatt hour one. The higher-end battery pack also comes with a more powerful motor and, says Hyundai, will travel 470 kilometers, that's 292 miles, per charge. On board, there's plenty of next-gen tech, including some semi-autonomous driver assistance features, full connectivity of the latest batch of smartphones, and CCS quick charging as standard. Pricing is yet to be announced, but Hyundai will begin rolling out the Kona EV later this year, so when I have more pricing information, I'll be sure to let you know. Have you ever wondered how a self-driving car sees the world? Unlike us humans, who use our audio, visual, and tactile sensors to figure out the world around us, autonomous vehicles use everything from visual sensors, that's cameras to you and I, to LiDAR, radar, GPS, and sometimes even cloud intelligence to see the world. And this week, Waymo published a rather interesting video in which it overlays the various pieces of data its cars identify and act upon in real time. What's more, it's a 360 degree VR video, so you can use either Google Cardboard or your computer mouse to explore the video as it plays. It's well worth checking it out, so I've left a link in the show notes below. Talking of autonomous vehicles, Nissan launched a field test of the Robotax survey that it's been developing with Japanese ISP DENA this week. Called the Easy Ride, the Robotaxi service is fully autonomous with autonomous Nissan Leaf and autonomous ENV200 minivans driving along a 4.5 kilometer, 2.7 mile route. At the moment, you can't deviate from that route, but the companies behind it are hopeful that the trial will eventually lead to a more comprehensive service. 
As with other robo-taxi services being developed and tested around the world, those who hail the rideshare vehicle via the dedicated smartphone app will be asked to share their experiences and thoughts of the service to Nissan and DENA, allowing the partnership to refine their services ahead of a more comprehensive launch sometime in the early 2020s. If you're into electric motorcycles, the chances are that you've heard of Ulta Motors, the small Bay Area company responsible for the rather nice redshift range of electric motorcycles. With an emphasis on motocross and enduro bikes, Ulta Motors is a force to be reckoned with at many racetracks around the world, but in recent years it's also pushed out a rather nice lightweight supermoto bike that's attracted decent reviews. Well, this week we learned that Harley-Davidson, yes, that Harley-Davidson, has made a significant equity investment in Ulta Motors to enable it to grow its own electric motorcycle program. Commenting that Ulta had experience and innovation that aligned with its own vision of the future, Harley-Davidson Davidson's investment makes sense, if not only to help it bring the live wire to market, but also to ensure that Ulta Motors doesn't get acquired by a competitor. Smart move. In last week's show, I shared the news that Porsche was apparently ditching diesel engines altogether to move towards electrification. And while at the time that was certainly the information available to us, it now seems that Porsche may not be ditching diesel completely after all. You see, after some back and forwards on the subject, Porsche had a spokesperson confirm this week that it would likely launch a diesel version of the Cayenne in 2018, alongside maybe a diesel Macan for Europe. Instead, it confirmed that diesel models would be dead in the US completely, with diesels taking more of a lesser role in Europe when appropriate plug-in and hybrid models exist. As always, if this changes, I'll be letting you know, and thank you to those of you who pointed out the confusion and errors this week as this story developed a bit. Over the past few weeks, I've been giving you some quick updates on the Tesla Model 3 rollout, with updates on both the ordering process and production volumes. Last week, I told you that Tesla was finally inviting reservation holders who weren't already Tesla customers to configure their cars, and that seems to be continuing apace this week, with more and more US customers telling me they're finally being invited to configure their car. At the same time, a dual-motor Tesla Model 3 was spotted in the wild at a supercharger station, showing that Tesla is certainly going through final validation for the more expensive, higher-performance model Elon Musk promised us would be coming to the lineup. Sadly, though, if you're outside the US, you're still going to have to wait a while for your car, especially if you're in a right-hand drive country. Sorry. As some of you may know, I've got something of a soft spot for dual sport motorcycles. Indeed, be it a Triumph Tiger, a KTM Enduro or a Ducati Scrambler, or my favourite, a BMW GS, I can't think of any better way of exploring the world than with a motorcycle strapped with a load of luggage that you can point at the sunset and then just keep going. Well, now Zero has come out with its own take on the Touring Dual Sport in the form of the DSR Black Forest Edition, complete with windscreen, light guard, panniers, and some tweaks to the onboard charging system and battery pack to allow for 70 to 80 miles at highway speeds and recharging at a rate of up to 94 miles per hour. It does at least hint that the zero emission Touring Dream may eventually be in reach. Sadly, I don't have any B-roll for this special edition, which is only available in Europe, but I do hope I'll get to ride it sometime. And yes, before you say, I know there are people who have ridden long distances on electric motorcycles that they've modified for the purpose, but this is a version that you can buy ready to go, which I think is quite nice. But the problem is, it's not really long distance. If only it did 200 miles or more per charge. Oh well. And finally, while electric cars still have the same steering wheel and pedal arrangements to other vehicles, they often have some quirks when it comes to the gear selector or driving techniques that you probably don't think twice about if you're used to them, but which can be off-putting the first time you get behind the wheel. And that's exactly what happened to a criminal this week in Austin, Texas. He tried to carjack a brand new Chevrolet Bolt EV at a city stoplight. But after forcing his way into the car by smashing the driver's side glass, the criminal got behind the wheel and there he stayed because he didn't know how to get the car moving. After eventually fleeing the vehicle, he was picked up by local police and faces a second-degree felony of 
robbery by assault. Just seems that crime doesn't pay. And on that note, it's time for me to bring another episode to a close. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Make sure you do something fun. And don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.